Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary and I am so excited for you to be here with me today. If you want to see this full face, go ahead and check out my previous video using all B Bella Cosmetics. Now, let's go ahead and wash this makeup off and put on a brand new face. Of course, the moment I decide to start recording, my neighbor decides it's a good time to start plowing. Well, hello everybody, how are you guys doing today? Um, hopefully you don't hear that plow too much in the background. There's a chance he might decide to go by the window here and it'll get, allowed, get loud for a little bit, uh, but we are still gonna roll. We're gonna create a video here today. Um, if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. And if you've been with us before, welcome back to the channel. Um, what we do on this brand new face channel is take one brand, one brand at a time and test it out and see how the products work together. So if you're excited for something like this, go ahead and keep on watching and like and subscribe uh, to the channel. I would greatly appreciate that. So let's just hop right in. Um, the brand that we are going to be using today is Almay. Yeah, super duper excited. I can't even recall if I have or have not used Almay products before, but everything in front of me looks pretty unfamiliar. They're all new products, so yeah, super duper excited. So I'm gonna pull up the brand website here and just see what the brand is all about. On here it says that they are clean, hyperallergenic makeup, uh, nothing to hide, easy to use. They want to minimize the risk of irritation when you use your makeup. Let's see here. They claim that uh, they show that the products are cruelty free, fragrance free, and also doctor tested. That is super duper cool. Let's see. There's a lot here on this site. So it just kind of goes into depth about being cruelty free. I think it's really cool, the whole hyperallergenic thing. Um, I don't know really what that means in a makeup brand, but uh, I guess if uh, maybe fragrance or certain um, products can kind of make be irritated to your skin, I think that that's what that's intending for. So that's a really cool thing to uh, have a brand be. So let's just go ahead and dive into it here. We're gonna start out on the eyes like we usually do. So our first product is going to be their concealer here. And this is the Skin Perfecting Comfort Concealer. So this product claims to disguise dark circles and blemishes, uh, lightweight, clean concealer, even coverage, should not settle into pores or fine lines or wrinkles, um, has blurring technology. Okay, very cool. Also mentions being hyperallergenic, dermatologist tested, um, good for sensitive skin, cruelty-free, fragrance-free, and oil-free. Okay, very exciting. So let's go ahead and open this up. There we go. So this one comes kind of like a lipstick. It's very interesting. Oh, and it like clicks. Very cool. So yeah, it sort of looks like a lipstick, but is more like a stick concealer. Let's go ahead and just swatch it here real quick. Okay. I mean, yeah, it looks pretty darn smooth just off of a, a nice swatch there. It doesn't feel super heavy for like a more stick or creamy um, concealer, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it, it feels really nice when like blending it out here with the finger. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this as our eye base. And the shade that I got mine in is their shade 100 Fair Claire. And it looks like they have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shades of this currently. And then I'm gonna try to blend this out with my Koki blender. So, so far I've got it blended out on just the one eye here. It is a very thin, not a full coverage concealer, I would say. I do like how it feels though. Um, it does very minorly look to be going in the creases here a little bit, which is not fun to see, but it's drying down nicely. It blends through nicely, which is really nice. So we will go ahead and go onto the other eye now. And I'll try blending this one out with my finger and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so blending it out here with my finger, I think that is working just a little bit better. I think the coverage is just a little more there. The sponge isn't pulling too much of it away here. That one right now doesn't seem to be sitting in the creases as much as this eye. So I'm gonna try and correct this a little bit, but I'm not too worried because we'll end up putting shadows and stuff over top of it. But as an eye base, I think it'll work out okay. It has a little bit of a 
grippy kind of feeling, I would say. It doesn't like fully feel like it dries down. Yeah, and it feels really nice here on the eyes so far. Okay, so next we are going to go into the eyeshadows and the eyeshadow that I decided to get was their Alame Shadow Squad. Um, so they are little quads. We're just gonna use one today, but I picked up two just to have options um, to decide kind of what we wanted to do with the look. So I've got a blue and I've got a purple one here. They have a total of 15 quad squads on their site currently. I think that's really cool. I think these are really cute and really fun looking. I'll open one up here in a second for you guys. But let's see what they claim. Provides a matte, a satin, a metallic, and a glitter. Um, they're supposed to provide brilliant color. They look amazing on their own, but you can also layer them, you know, create a nice monochromatic look. I cannot pronounce, I'm guessing it's some sort of doctor. It says here it's an oath, <laughs> oh, oh, ophthalmologist tested. I don't know what that is, but tested. Um, it's good for sensitive eyes and contact lens wears. Okay, very nice. Always hyperallergenic, fragrance-free, clean, cruelty-free. Okay, very exciting. I think, let's go purple. Let's go with the purple. So opening it up here, here is what it looks like. What I think is so interesting about this quad is on a typical eyeshadow, they would be separated by like little metal pans and everything like that. These do just kind of like blend into each other, which I think is just so interesting the way that they are put together like that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and swatch um, all four of these on the back of the hand real quick, just to see what we are working with. So you might not be able to tell, but there should be four shades swatched on the back of my hand here. Um, right here should be matte. I hardly can see anything on my hand here. Then we've got glitter next to that. Next is metallic. And the last one, which is barely there, is the satin. Now, I even took some time to with the glitters and the metallic to try to get those to show. And even uh, with the matte and the satin, these are very sheer. It's really pretty, but not as pigmented as it seems just like the way that they state it on the site. When reading over the site here, they said one power color. I kind of took that as it was going to be punchy, very, not very pigmented, but Provide a little bit more pigment than what we've got on the back of our hand here, um, but that is okay. Let's go ahead and grab a brush here. I'm gonna try to use all four shades. We'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna use a ColourPop E17 brush. I'm gonna dip into that matte shade first. And this is, at least from swatching it, this was super sheer. This is gonna be our primary crease shade, but I am gonna apply it all over the lid as well. Okay, it is a very sheer color, but this is the matte, I believe it's the matte. Yeah, this is the matte one here so far. What's happening is because they, the pans are all, or the single pan, it's all kind of like put together, I do keep bumping the glitter shade a little bit. So a little bit of that is also going into that, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, so we've got that very sheer purple shade built up here. I do think it's ever so slightly more pigmented with a brush than trying to use your finger. I did even try to take my finger and go in to try to fill the eye a little quicker and that didn't do much. So I'm gonna do the other eye here. Okay, so next we're just gonna continue to build the colors on top of each other. I'm gonna go in with that satin shade. I'm gonna try using my finger only and I'm gonna try to build this on the lid and then from there build up the metallic and then build up the glitter just to see how purple we can get this eye look to be. Okay, and so just with my finger, there is the satin buildup compared to just the matte shade here on the eye. Build it up, a, attempt to build it up here a little bit more, and then I'm going to do the other eye here now. All right, we will just keep building. Next, we're gonna go into, I believe, yes, this one I believe is the metallic. Build on top of that, so metallic built up versus just the satin on that guy. And then lastly, dipping into the glitter shade and building that up. Okay, glitter versus just the metallic. Glitter, metallic. Okay, so there is the purple squad. Apply it on the eyes here. Definitely 
sheer and you can see it here. This did take some time to build up. Um, it is really pretty. I do like this monochromatic, um, but definitely took some time to get a very sheer amount of purple to show up on the face here. Let's go ahead now and go into the eyeliner. So I have a couple of eyeliners. I decided to get their Alame, uh, just the liquid liner. They've also got one that's more of a liquid intense eyeliner. This is just the standard liquid eyeliner. It just comes in black. It says here that it is fragrance-free, hypoallergenic, and that long doctor ophthalmologist tested. Um, let's dig into the details. It is an inkwell bottle, so like dip has a little what type of applicator does it say? This looks to be a felt tip applicator. Flexible tip applicator that provides precise lines even for non-pros, okay? Making it the best way to wing it. I don't know if we're gonna do a wing today, um, but they say that you should be able to create fairly simple wings with it, it sounds like. Water resistant, lasts all day, smooth, skip proof, won't smudge or smear or fade. So when we open it up here, here is what that looks like. The tip of it is definitely a little shorter than some of the ones that I'm used to. It almost feels like it, almost like a blender where it kind of like bubbles and then comes to a point. So I'm not the best when it comes to usually these like dip ones or inkwell, I guess that's maybe the term that I should be using. So I'm gonna apply this to the upper lash line. Again, I don't think I'm gonna wing this one out, but we'll see what happens. All right, there is one eye done here so far. I just kind of created a very baby wing that my eye will pretty much just cover up when it's open. Very black, very matte. I do like that a lot. It is very liquidy, so it goes on really quick, really fast. Not as thin of a line that I would have hoped for, um, but yeah, it does apply really, really quick. I do like the dry down of it here so far. So let's go ahead and do the other eye now. Okay, awesome, yeah. Very matte, very black. I I do think I'm liking the formula here. Um, I'm not the best when it comes to controlling these types of liners. So again, it is a little thicker of a line than what I was going for, but I mean, yeah, applied really, really nicely. So next we are going to curl our lashes and we will introduce the mascara. And I went with the Alame Multi-Benefit Mascara, their blue tube here. I think I've heard things about people liking the blue tube. They've got maybe five or six other mascaras on the site here. This blue tube mascara, the Multi-Benefit one comes in one, two, three, four shades. Black, brown, black waterproof, and well, blackest black. I think I've got the, just the basic black one here. So the mascara has all the same claims as the other ones. I'm not gonna try to pronounce that doctor name here again, but this one's tested that way as well. It says here, this should deliver four lash loving benefits, volume, length, definition, and conditioning. Okay, ooh, that's a nice one to hear. And we're always looking for that length for my teeny tiny baby lashes. And it says here that it's formulated with keratin. I haven't looked up too much of what keratin is intended for, but I think that's, it says here, kindness to your eyelashes. So maybe it's just like not a harmful ingredient. Um, good for sensitive eyes and contact lens wearers. Alrighty, so opening up the tube here, we've got more of a like bristly applicator, somewhat large. And then they come to a slight little point there at the end. So we will apply this. Okay, this definitely took some time to get it where it is. The liner is a little thick in my lashes. If you know, they're teeny tiny baby lashes. Um, so here's one eye done so far. I'll try to turn here so maybe you can see them. Um, not as much volume and length that I would hope for here so far. I'm gonna try to build it up here a little bit more and see if a couple more coats will make a difference. Um, but again, it took it took some time to get it here. They're not staying lifted. Like I with the liner, I can't even tell that I have um, that I have lashes at all right now. So I'm gonna keep trying to build it up here, and I'll do the other eye here as well. I think that's as good as the mascara is going to get here. Hopefully, you can sort of see that. Um, 
it's pretty. It's it's a nice natural mascara, I would say. It's just not giving me that length that I would have loved to have seen. So where are we? Let's go ahead and move on to the face now. So we are going to grab the primer. This is the Alame Skin Perfecting Comfort Care Primer Base. Dermatologist tested, fragrance-free, hypoallergenic, all of that good stuff. It is a lightweight primer, but loaded with skincare benefits. Help your skin feel softer, smoother, better moisturized, and even appears to be firmer and more even toned. Okay, if you've got texture on your skin, um, this is a breathable primer that should help with perfecting your complexion. Okay, and it does wonders for your makeup. It is quick drying, creates the perfect canvas, um, helps lock in makeup without caking, melting, or streaking. Wow, they have a lot of benefits on this one. Ooh, very exciting. Hyaluronic acid, vitamin B5, okay. Helps with the appearance of fine lines, formulated without parabens, I don't know what that word is, plathates, SLS, mineral oils, DMDM hydration, formulated formaldehyde, and trislosin. I don't know what any of those words, I don't know what a lot of those words mean, but that's okay. Yeah, they have so much stuff in mind here. The tube, it says is 40% post-consume recycled materials, and the cap is 96 post-consumer recycled materials. Oh, it's hyperallergenic, dermato dermatologist tested, clean, cruelty-free, fragrance-free. Cool, let's open her up. So it comes with a little tube, little squeegee applicator here. Ooh, it's a very cute, it's a, like a pink color. It's fragrance-free, I don't know why I tried to smell it. There's no fragrance in, I think, any of the products. I mean, it smells kind of skin carry. Definitely looks juicy, nice and hydrating on the back of the hand here so far. Quick drying, perfect canvas. It does feel on the back of my hand here at least tacky for a bit. So I don't know if that's when it's dry or if I should wait for that tackiness to go away. Wow, I mean, okay. Yeah, it definitely seems to be blurring on the back of my hand here. You won't be able to see the comparison on camera, but that's cool. Let's go ahead and apply this all over the face. My hands, you won't be able to see this either, are so glittery from this um, eyeshadow quad. It is everywhere. Got it blended in here. I want it to sit a little bit to see how it'll dry down. Um, it starts out looking nice and juicy and hydrating. That does pull back a little bit. There is a little bit of maybe a slight satiny, satiny, satiness to the face. I mean, it is blurry. Um, I can still see some of the more, like the deeper pores and stuff, but I mean, everything looks like slightly smoothed out. I think that looks really, really nice. Still just like a touch tacky. Again, I don't know if that's supposed to dry down or if that is what the finish is supposed to feel like so that the foundation sticks better. So we will let that sit here for a little bit and we will introduce the foundation. It might be more of like a skin tint type product, but is there smart shade skin tone matching makeup? Um, and I got their light medium shade here. So they have an anti-aging one. This is not the anti-aging. This is just the regular one. Comes in one, two, three, four, five, six shades. Dermatologist tested, fragrance-free, hypoallergenic. Oh, okay. How do I know what foundation color is right for me? Our liquid foundation formula instantly transforms from a white cream to your ideal shade as you smooth it on. That is the magic of technology. So I guess it's white. As you warm it up on the face, it's supposed to kind of match the tone of your face. Okay, very interesting. I've used a couple products like that before, not a whole lot. There's these tiny little spheres that break open to release the pigment as you blend it over your face. Natural looking, streak-free, medium coverage foundation, luminous glow that builds so you can get the exact coverage that you want. SPF 15, broad spectrum, protection. So I feel that when they have those beads, am I supposed to use my fingers? Am I okay to use a blender? Hmm. So opening, oh yeah, yeah, opening it up here. Dip a little bit on the back of my hand here. It is white. It's kind of like a gray, but you can see the little sandiness in there. I'm guessing that's kind of the beads. And as we blend it out here, see if you can see it transform here. Oh, a little bit. Oh, weird. 
Very interesting. Hmm. It is hmm. starting to become very orangey on the back of my hand, like a, a bad self-tan. I wonder if this is going to oxidize. I feel like the way to go is with the hands. I don't know why. Just with the way that you need to break the little beads up, that seems to make the most sense. Maybe I can go in with a brush or a blender and try to really get in the corners that my fingers don't get very well. I'm gonna squeeze some of this on my hand, start blending it in. So I haven't blended it onto my forehead here yet, just a little bit like down the bridge of the nose there. I think you can clearly see that this is a little orangey, a little too warm, I would say. Hopefully some of the other products will help blend this out, or at least make it work. I'm gonna get the neck here. <laughs> you can see it is clearly not the right color. I'm gonna try and go over it here with a sponge just to make sure everything is evenly applied. It feels like it dries down pretty quick, so I don't feel like I'm really moving anything around here, but I don't know, maybe making a difference. Okay, so there it is. Definitely too dark of a shade. I got there light medium. So there is, it looks like possibly, and that's deep. Is there a lighter shade than light medium? My best light. So I think maybe I should have tried going with the lightest shade. This is, I believe, the second from the lightest shade, and it is a little too orangey. Hopefully we'll be able to make it work. But other than the shade, I do think the finish feels really nice, looks really nice. Um, it may be a combination of the primer. I do feel that things are looking pretty smooth here. Um, it does not feel too heavy. There is a slight tackiness. I think that might be coming through from the primer. Um, so we will want to try and set this down. There is a good amount of, yeah, I'm, yeah, there's some tackiness all over the face here. Um, it doesn't feel like it's gonna go away anytime soon. So yeah, pretty finish. Feels comfortable on the face here. The color is just a little off and it is just kind of interesting um, to apply. Let's go ahead and grab the concealer. I had meant to do this before the foundation because it's kind of this like stick type concealer, but that's okay. Hopefully I can provide some brightness to the face with this guy. Okay. I think that slightly lightened and brightened things up here kind of in the center of the face. Not as much as I would have hoped to, but things are looking, things are looking okay here so far. Alrighty. It did take a little bit, especially on the forehead, drawing a couple of lines, being that the base here is feeling really tacky. Um, it took some time to get those lines to kind of blend out, but I do think that the concealer is blending nicely. So there is that. Let's go ahead and try to get rid of this tackiness with the setting powder. Um, and I have their Alame Loose Finishing Powder. I have the shade 100 Light. So it looks like this comes in three shades. All the same claims, dermatologist, fragrance free, hypoallergenic, helps for mattifying oily areas. I don't have a lot of oily areas. So the only shine coming through is from your beaming personality. That's cute. Light to medium buildable coverage um, without one ounce of cakiness or chalkiness. In fact, your skin, your skin not only looks perfect, but more radiant too. So mattifying, but radiant, okay. Even out skin tone, minimizes the appearance of peers, blurs things, the whole shebang. Weightless, wonderful, comfortable. All right. So when we open her up, we do get a nice little puff. I don't usually use these in the videos, but maybe I will. I'm kind of like trying to convince myself to use these puffs a little bit more. So let's use it today. And then I did pre-open the stickies here a little bit. They did go down here. I'll have to open that back up. So I like just opening up about half of it there and then we will dump powder into the lid. I get worried when a shade is not like a translucent and it is like, like this is the lightest, 100 light. The powder does look kind of dark. So that is always worrying that it's gonna alter the shade of the foundation that we already have. I mean, if it goes lighter, cool. If it makes it even darker, not cool. Um, let's go ahead and just put this on the puff and start setting the face. All right, the face is set. Here's what the face is looking like so far. Um, it definitely took away some of that tackiness. You can still feel like if I try to like slide my hands against my face, there's a little bit of a grip, but it's not feeling nearly as tacky and it's not feeling cakey or dry here on the face at all, which is really, really nice. I can't tell if it did or did not alter the makeup 
or the foundation color in any way. It started as if it like applied a little bit lighter, but I think it just kind of sheared out. And I think we're still just seeing the normal foundation shade um, shining through here so far. Um, the finish is still looking really, really nice. So I do like that. Let's go ahead now and hop into brows. We've got two brow products. So they only have two brow products, which are these two products, I believe. So first we have the pencil. It is the Alame Brow Pencil. Looks like it comes in three shades. I got their shade Dark Blonde. Is there a regular blonde? There is a taupe, a universal taupe. That probably would have been a better option. That's okay. Hyperallergenic, fragrance-free, big doctor, ophthalmologist tested. <laughs> um, says on here, it should be buildable coverage, blendable formula, has a spoolie. Look at that, we got a spoolie. Um, Ah, it broke. A little bit of product here came out. Let me see if I can just twist this up. So it has a triangle tip applicator there. Eyebrow pencil is slanted for two very important reasons. The point is helping for defining the edges of your eyebrows while the flat edge will help fill in the sparse areas to achieve whatever brow you would like. Formula that glides on. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's go ahead and spoolie our brows and apply the pencil. Okay, there is one brow done here so far. That filled in pretty quick. Um, definitely a pigmented color. I was worried at first that this might be too dark, but um, when you take the spoolie through, it does actually fade and blend out pretty nicely. Like I just kind of went a little heavy there. And if I just kind of pull up with the spoolie, it diffuses really nicely. So I actually really do like the color. So there's one brow here. I will go ahead and do the other one. Hopefully that looks okay. Brows are not always the easiest for me, but there is the brow pencil in. I'm really liking the color. Um, and I like the formula here a lot as well. It's kind of that kind of dry sort of powdery formula. Um, it's very pigmented, but it's being that it's not like waxy or anything like that. Um, when you comb through it with the spoolie, it just diffuses really, really nicely. Kind of, the way that I would describe it is kind of foolproof, I would say. I'm not the best when it comes to applying the brows, um, especially in the front here. Definitely struggle, can't keep control very well. And the spoolie does a really good job of softening the product um, if you've gone a little too heavy, so. Liking that so far, let's grab the brow gel. This is the Alme Brow Styler Brow Mascara. This comes in four shades. There are three tinted shades. Um, let's see here. Light brown, medium brown, dark brown. I decided just to go with the clear. Um, I like having clear brow gels. Tinted ones are nice too. I've, I've talked about my typical brow routine before. I won't bore you too much with it, but I do like having clear brow gels to usually put on before I go in with pencil, but I know that's not always a typical thing to do. Hypoallergenic like fragrance, all the love, love, attested. Do, 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 do. This brow mascara amps up the fullness, coats every hair, uh, keeping it in place, allowing your brow's natural shape and color to show through with the clear one. I'm not sure about the tinted ones. Has a Slimmy, slimmy brush is what they call it. Oh, okay, yeah, it's cute, it's pink. Nice slim brush, I like that. Get every hair, help you shape and fill. So they look thicker, if you wanna go thicker and more defined. Soft, lightweight, natural, not crunchy. Okay, sometimes I like a crunchy eyebrow, then I know it's gonna hold in place really well, but this is not crunchy formula. Has a special blends of oils, a more marula oil. So I guess that's a good oil for your hair. Okay, cool. So let's apply this to the brows. Okay, so far it is lifting them really nicely. Hopefully it'll keep that hold. Okay, so far so good. The brow hairs are staying really nice and lifted. They say on the website, not crunchy. However, I am feeling it slightly holding, like creating kind of that hairspray kind of feel like they're gonna stay in place. 
Um, so I do like that. It is definitely not as intense as some very strong hold uh, brow gels that I have or brow mascaras that I have. So if they stay up nice and lifted, that'll be nice, I think. So there is the brows. Okay, let's go on to, hmm. I'll quickly finish up the lower lash. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. So I think I'm just going to take our color pop brush here and dip. I'm gonna try between the matte and the satin, the most two sheer shades in the palette and just kind of quickly run this along the lower lash line. And then we will grab the mascara and apply this to the lower lash. Um, I may try to go in with another coat on the top to see if we can boost those a little bit. Eyes are done. We coated the upper lashes a little bit. I don't think it made much of a difference. If it did, they're just not sitting very upright at the moment. Um, the wand is definitely kind of large. A little tricky to get the lower lashes with that wider wand that it comes with, um, but the eyes are done. Let's move back to the face here and introduce the bronzer. Now, I don't believe Almay has a bronzer, but they did decide to get. So I got their Alme Clear Complexion Pressed Powder. This comes in five shades, and I decided to get it in a deeper shade, 400 medium deep, to try and use as a bronzer. Finely milled face powder, um, good for absorbing oils, um, help keeps the skin looking flawless, shine free uh, without being cakey or making the skin look dry. Ooh, acne fighting slow. There's so many big skin words in this brand. Acne fighting salicylic acid, the maximum amount possible to help shrink blemishes and stop new ones from appearing. Okay, very cool. Oil-free, non-irritating, smooths the look of your skin, sheer to light coverage, natural finish, good for oily or combination and acne prone skin. This is, it comes in six shades, but right now on the site, there's only five listed. So looks like, oh, they do provide a little puff on the bottom. I'm not gonna use this because we're gonna try to use this as a bronzer. Here is the product. So hopefully this works as a bronzer. It seems as though it's kind of supposed to be like an all over powder. I don't know. It says sheer to light coverage. So maybe it'll need a little bit of time to build up as a bronzer. We shall see. I'm going to use the ColourPop F18 brush. We will dip on in. Maybe you can see this. Um, definitely seems sheer. Doesn't help that our <laughs> foundation is dark, so I don't want to go too heavy and make things way too dark. Uh, but I think we can slightly see that on the face here. Now I know that I'm not using it in its intended form, so I can't really speak too much on if it is or isn't working very well as a bronzer. But I don't think things are looking too bad right now. So that is this product so far. Let's go ahead and do blush now. Actually, we've got a cream highlighter. So let's do that first. Okay, so the highlighter we have is the Almay Instant Glow Highlight Duo. This comes in two shades. I have the shade Nude Glow. So it's a two-in-one, it comes with a more liquid um, product here on the one side with a doe foot applicator there. And then on the other side, it is a stick highlighter. Soft focus, micro fine pearls, giving the skin a nice glow, also helps with blurring pores, okay. So it looks like um, you intend to put the stick down first and then you put the liquid over top Okay, yeah, alrighty, let's give it a go. So here is this again here. I'm gonna swatch it on the back of my hand here and I think we'll probably apply it with like a blender off the back of our hand. So there is that, it looks nice and dewy and juicy. I'm not sure how much we should use, but I'm gonna take the bottom of my sponge here, try to bounce that on the face. Now let's try applying it directly actually. Oh, I did it wrong. I did it wrong. Well, we've got it applied 
on this side of the face here so far. Honestly, I'm really not seeing it, but let's try, let's try this again. We're just gonna go over top of it with the cream. Let's swatch that for you. So right there, definitely kind of metallic-y, pearly. So let's swipe that. Okay, ooh, wow. Okay, on this side, we did it a little more correct. <laughs> well, at least so far. This is just the cream applied here. I was worried, I'm not sure, I was worried that this would be too dark. On camera there, that looks really, really nice. I'm worried in person, it'll create kind of a weird shift. I guess I'm not seeing that too much right now. And here's the side we kind of messed up on. I can't really see into the camera Ugh. how well that looks. So let me now put this over top. Let's see if that becomes even more shazammy. I mean, you can see it on camera, it picks up. I honestly think I like it better without the liquid. Okay, it's there, it's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and set that down and apply the blush. And for blush, we have the Alme Healthy Hue. These come in four shades and I got their shade Nearly Nude. It's a lightweight powder blush, says it, it's packed with vibrant color, highest pigment technology. Okay, you can build the color, blend it out nicely. Okay, there's a bunch of uh, skincare ingredients here in it. Uh, it says made without parabens, uh, plasticites, SLS, mineral oils, DMDM hydration, formal hydrates, and trisoslin. I'm gonna make sure to put all of these big words up here because I know I'm pronouncing the majority of them incorrectly. Um, but all of those ingredients are not made without any of those ingredients. So I think that's a good thing. The container is 100% made by made with paper. Plant-based, you know, good for the environment. Uh, hypoallergenic, dermal, dermatology tested, cruelty-free and fragrance-free. Okie dokie. So here is what this shade looks like. I really like the texture of the, um, pressed powder. Let's just grab an e.l.f. angled blush brush, dip on in, and apply. Ooh. Ooh, it is glowy. That is a glowy blush. Okay, there is the blush built up here. It is a glowy blush. I don't always love a glowy blush. Um, sometimes they can um, emphasize some textures, which it's not entirely, especially because a lot of the other under products are helping to reduce and you know not show texture and stuff. I just feel like sometimes with where the blush is applied, sometimes it just gives a shine on the face where you don't quite want it. Um, it might be helping out with our highlighter situation, helping that look a little more beaming. So I think that's really pretty. But for a blush, this might just be a little, little more beamy than I'd like it to be. I do really like the color though. So there is the blush applied. I believe we are on to our last product. They don't have a setting powder or lip liners, so we are going to hop into the last product, which is the lipstick. So the lipstick is the Lip Vibe Lipstick. This comes in so many shades. Let me see if I can just find the number on here. 24 lipstick shades. It says it has great color payoff. Pigments are rich, formula feels amazing and silky, swipes on, you're good to go. Has vitamin E and C in it. Comes in both matte and cream finishes. I don't know what finish I have in mine. Go Wild Matte is what I got. Comfortable, color does not feather or bleed. Okay, okay, very cool. So again, I've got the shade Go Wild Matte. Here is what it looks like. It's a nice nude. Very nice. I love me a good nude. This has a fragrance in it. This smells sort of chocolatey. And that applied really quickly. It's a, it feels, maybe it's just this color. This one feels a little bit sheer, but that also could just be, it is a little bit of a lighter nude than I expected it to be, but it feels really, really nice here on the lips. Okay, yeah. There's that lip color, feels really nice. And there is the lips complete, and this is the full face complete. 
Overall, I do like the look. Um, it's really pretty. We will dive into my overall thoughts as we talk about the products here individually. So the look did come together nicely. There are just some little things here and there that are not my favorite about the look, but let me know what you guys think of the look down below in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. Now, this full face cost us $132.77. Um, for a very clean skincare type brand. I do think that is a fairly good price. We have a full face. Really the only things that we were missing was a lip liner and a setting spray right there at the end. So we did get a full face put together here. Um, so yeah, loving the price point, loving the vision and the idea of the skincare of the brand. I think that's really cool. And let's talk about the products individually here real quick. So we started off with that um, concealer base here, um, the Skin Perfecting Comfort Concealer. This is a different concealer than I've used before. I've used stick concealers like this before, but not one quite like this. I will say yes to it, probably more for um, natural everyday looks, but it is a yes. And then we did the eyes. Oh, this guy's tough. The eyes look nice. I do like this monochromatic look that we've created. I think it just, it shouldn't be that tough to come up with this pigment. It took some time and even still here on camera, it's not, hmm. I'm gonna say yes. I do like how the look came out here. I don't know how often I will grab for a palette like this because it just, it took some time to really get the pigment to really show up, but the eyes do look really pretty. So not my favorite product, but I will be hanging onto it because I do like how the eyes are looking. And I am curious to try out this other blue shade that we have here as well. Then we applied the eyeliner. This guy is a yes. I'm actually really happy with the formula. Um, the pigment is really nice. I will need to get a little bit more familiar with these type of applicators. They've just not always been my favorite. Um, but with the formula and the pigment from it, I think that is very nice. So yes to the eyeliner. And then the mascara, this guy right here. I do think I'm going to have to pass on this. With this product and so many of the other products in the brand, I love the thought and like the, the I guess it's not skincare if it's your eyes, but um, just the consideration for the care of your lashes, I think is a really cool thing, but I really was looking for a little bit more from it. Uh, definitely was looking for some more length and it just did not provide that. So this is a no. And then we moved into the face and we applied our primer, the Skin Perfecting Comfort Care Primer. This is a yes. I'm actually really happy with the finish that is going on here with the face. And I definitely think that this primer was a contributor. Felt really nice applying it. Um, it did provide a little bit of a tackiness. So I do think that the foundation is sticking over top really well. So hopefully things won't smudge and budge around. So this guy is a yes. And then we applied the foundation. I will not use this shade here anymore. So it does look really nice here on the skin. I don't think these type of like pigment changing foundations are my favorite. If I had the right shade, I probably would hang on to it. Being that I don't, I'm not really urged to go pick up the right shade. They're just not products that I reach for very often. So it is a very cool product. Um, however, I'm not gonna use this shade and I'm not super urged to pick up the correct shade. And then we did our brows. I haven't taken some time to look back at them here. Okay, so for the brows, we first used the pencil and this guy is a yes. Sadly, this one is very, very broken. So it was a little tricky to use. The um, product kept falling out. I must have broke at some point. Um, but I do really like the formula. I do really like this darker blonde shade that we have. Yeah, I'm loving how the brows here are looking. So this is a yes. And then the brow gel is also a yes. Um, I was worried that when it said non-crunchy that it would not provide the hold that I was looking for, but they're staying in place. And they did dry down in that like 
hairspray-like feeling has sort of gone away, but they're still not budging. So I do really love how the brow hairs are staying in place. So this is a yes. Then I hopped over the powder. This guy right here. I'm going to say yes for now to this guy. I will have to try it with a foundation that is actually the right shade um, to see if the um, light pale shade here that we have does do any altering to the foundation color. I did like, it is starting to feel a slight tacky, slightly tacky here again, but initially when applying it, I really liked how it pulled away some of that tackiness. Um, so I do want to give it a couple more tries just to see how nice and set it will help the face feel, but does not feel cakey does not feel matte, overly matte here on the face. I'm, again, I'm loving how the finish of the face here is looking. I do think that this was a contributor to that, so this is a yes for now. Then we did bronzer or bronzer. Um, this is a yes for now as well. I know I did not buy, they didn't have a bronzer, but I wanted to get one more product um, so with the foundation being a touch dark and this not necessarily being a bronzer, I do want to try this out a couple more times just to see how it could be used as a bronzer. I very slightly can see it sculpting on the face here a little bit. Um, so hopefully with the right shade, this will be a nice bronzer. We'll just have to see. And then we went into the highlighter. I think I'm gonna have to say no. When I really think about it, I really don't think I would grab for this product very often. Out of the duo here, I do think that the stick provided the most bling, the most shine and pearliness to the face. It was a little tricky to try to blend out the little line of highlighter that we created. Um, so that was a little bit tricky. And then they said to put this over top to provide more shine. I almost feel that this took away from what the stick was doing initially. So this is gonna have to be a no. Next, we went into the blush. This is a tough one. I'm gonna say yes for now. I don't love the shiny finish of it. These aren't always my favorite types of blushes, but I do like the color. I do think, oftentimes I'll hang on to products like this to be kind of like a blush topper if I do wanna have a little bit of that pearly juiciness to it, but I'll never use it as a full overall blush because it can just be a little too intense. So I love the color. I do think the shine is pretty, just a little over top. So I'm gonna say yes for now on that guy. And our last product was the lipstick. And I love how this is feeling on the face. I love the color that we picked up. It's looking really, really nice. So this lipstick is a yes. And so again, overall, the look is looking really nice here. Um, a couple products that we will not be hanging on to, but we do have some products that I am very excited to have in the collection now. Let me know if you guys have any other brands that you would love to be made into a brand new face video. Leave that in the comments down below. I would love to make a future brand new face video for you guys. And that is going to be everything for this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And if you wanna be notified of the next time that I post, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified. And that's gonna be everything. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.